I'd like to introduce tonight from our campus community, we have Dr. Coley. Uh, we have Mr. Stegner from uh, Advancement. We have Dan Montplaisier from Advancement. Uh, Megan Stang from Housing. Uh, we have Chris Pina Gonzalez, the VP of Student Affairs here as well. And we have Carrie. Uh, Carrie is the new advisor. And Carrie's been kind of running around with his first de design deck week and getting the lab up to going. So thank you all to the campus community for showing up. Um, for some of our distinguished alumni, we have Butch and Viv Vivian Lindley. We have Bob and Linda Pettis. Uh, everyone, I'd like to say thank you to Michelle, she's here. Uh, we also have Larry Emlett, uh, Steve Kin, Dale Wong, uh, Joe Brookshies, I didn't see him, and Richard Eastman. These have all been uh, alumni who contributed a lot to getting the lab going. Uh, we'd just like to say thank you everyone and welcome. And with that, I'd like to introduce Chris Nars and Regina Shakui. Uh, I am Chris Nars and I am the Mona President. Hi, I'm Regina Shakui. I'm the San Francisco President for this year. Hello, I'm Maddie Tony. I was the San Luis Obispo President last year. Hello, my name is Cindy Dice. I was the promoter president for last year, and I would like to thank all the alumni for your support and coming here tonight. We are so excited to start this float, and we are very proud and happy to pass it on to this year's team. And we also wanted to give one shout out to PKW. Thank you so much for all your support and for towing the float for us. I'd like to give a shout out to this year's team as well. As, oh, I would like to give a shout out to this year's team as well as last year's team for making this float possible. This entire beautiful float you see in front of you. And I'd like to pass it back to Heather. Hey, I need you, you guys can take the mask off when you speak. We can't hear you in the back, so you guys, when you just speak next time, we're going to take the mask off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're going to do some good talking. There you go. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to get this loud enough so you can hear me. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here. It's great to be here, my wife Vivian and I. There you go, somebody turned it up or not. So, uh, it, it's great to see some alumni from way back in the day. Uh, the 60s, 50s, and uh, it'd be the 1950s and 60s, so no, no confusion. So, how many of you present here tonight, by show of hands, worked in the old lab? And um, how many of you think this is a better space? Oh, good. Well, I, uh, I was amazed uh, when I came back from Vietnam and, and uh, to grad school for a brief stint, and they were still using the same facility. And what, 40, 50 something years later, they were st you all were using the same facility. I was amazed every year that nobody got electrocuted. <laughs> Welding in the, in the rain or in puddles of water is not a very good idea, but uh, fortunately uh, someone was looking over all of us and, uh, and we avoided that calamity. But uh, it's great. Uh, Vivian and I are, are very happy to have been able to uh, contribute to the building of this uh, facility. And I'm so glad to see the, the 2022 float, um, I'm confident it's going to look great on New Year's morning. What, what number is the float in the parade? 73. 73? Oh good, I can sleep late that way. <laughs> I don't like it when it's in like 14th. No, that's not good. Oh no, this is the 73rd. I don't know what Oh, yo, see I got bad in. It's okay, you can sleep in. We are towards the tail end of the parade this year. Oh, okay, good. Good. So, uh, probably have mimosas for breakfast and watch it uh, from Arizona, in fact. So we're headed for Phoenix uh, tomorrow. But uh, it's great to uh, see so many people here, young people. You guys that work on this float make me think I'm 100. 
I'm not. I'm just so be clear. I'm not a hundred. But uh, it's great. And I think I'm supposed to introduce Mr. Bob Pettis. He's the orator of the two of us, and and he even has prepared notes. So uh, I, I didn't. But uh, thank you all again for being here. Thanks for all you do for Cal Poly Pomona and for working on the float. Thank you. Anyway that knows me knows I always try to be prepared for these kind of things. In January, I learned I had a serious health condition that may not end well. This building has been a dream of mine for a very long time. So in January, I asked Krista to arrange a tour for me, my wife, Linda, plus some other road float friends. After we toured the building with Carrie and Krista, I struck out on my own. I was in the rear of the building near the kitchen area when I heard a voice. Not done yet. Been a long time getting here. I turned around to see who was there. There was no one there. I was alone. When I connected with the others, I asked them if they'd heard the voice. None had. I came down yesterday to avoid the crowd and see the building and, newly complete, and nearly completed float. Again, there was a voice. Only it was not the same. It's almost finished, and this building is fabulous. I thought his voice was Bill Jacobson, which made no sense, as Bill had died in February. I was walking outside later when I heard another voice. This voice I knew. It was Ron Simons. Ron and I chaired the 1962 and 63 floats. And don't we wish, <coughs> pardon me, and we've been together and remained best friends for 60 years. Hey, Bobby boy, check out the float! <laughs> and, don't wish we, and don't we wish we'd have this building? Ron died in August of this year. That's when I began to cry. My only explanation was that these three had come back in spirit to celebrate the occasion of moving Star Grazers to Pasadena. Hey, Don Miller, I was only eight years old when you chaired the Cal Poly's first road break float entry. Let us know that you think this year's float, Cal Poly 73rd, is ready to make the journey to Pasadena, where it will be directed, decorated for the parade. Don Miller, what do you say? Oh, he's young whippersnappers here. I think it's ready to go. <laughs> wow. Bill Jacobson. Look where we've come since the theme prize winner you chaired in 1959. The second year the float was built on this campus. To experience and share how these students can continue to grow and improve their design and construction skills was a treat for you. The opportunity for the joint committees to meet at your ranch had a huge impact, not only on the floats, but also on the lives and futures of the students who made Rose Float part of their Cal Poly education. Do you feel this year's renter is ready to make the trip to Pasadena? <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> Simons, look what's happening. Thanks for your years of devotion to Cal Poly. Thanks for your personal effort in combining two Cal Poly campuses, Rose Float Committees, which made this a unique and rewarding student project. The Rose Float program is alive and well, thanks to you. It would not have been possible if you hadn't made this special student project your life's work. Now we all want to know if you feel Star Grazers is ready for the trip to Pasadena tonight. Sorry for the summing of paper. All right, listen up, you Cal Poly slow Mustangs. Listen up. You've worked hard to get to this point. Now let us hear from you if you feel this float, Star Grazers, is ready to move to Pasadena tonight. Is it ready? Yeah. All you Cal Poly Pomona Broncos, listen up. You've worked hard to get to this point. 
Now let us hear from you if you feel this float, Star Grazers, is ready to make the float, ready to make the trip to Pasadena. Is it ready for tonight? Yeah. All you Cal Poly float alumni and members of the Cal Poly staff, you've been at this, you've been at this point before. But this year there is a new state-of-the-art building that makes this a very special event. And more importantly, this new building took a whole lot of effort and money to become reality. Those of you that helped make this dream a reality can all be proud of what we've done. Through our collective efforts, we've accomplished something that, that had not never been done before. Before we truly share in the pride that comes from seeing this magnificent building. Now, let others here tonight hear from you. We all want to know if you think and feel Star Grazers is ready for the trip to Pasadena tonight. <laughs> Dr. Coley, I don't know where you are. <laughs> Dr. Coley, thank you for recognizing the value of this unique student project for Cal Poly Pomona students. Students who have participated in Roosevelt projects will benefit in ways they can't even imagine today. And special thanks to Krista Spangler for all you've done to raise funds for this magnificent building and for keeping the enthusiasm at such a high level. And on a personal basis, thanks everyone here tonight. This is an exciting night and I'm so pleased to be here. I didn't almost didn't make it, <laughs> but I'm here. And thank you, thank you for what, all the work you've done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Butch and Bob. What a wonderful treat to have you here tonight. Um, I am pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Soraya Coley and acknowledge her husband, Ron, for being here tonight. And this lab would not be here without all of you, but without this mighty woman here who said the first day, oh my Lord, what is going on down there with rain and, and welding? So I want to introduce Dr. Serena Coley. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, this is such a momentous uh, occasion. And I am uh, so pleased to uh, be here and to join with you as we have the uh, 73rd float uh, with the two universities, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and Cal Poly Pomona. And this is made, as you've heard, has been made possible by our friends, our alumni, our administrators, our faculty, our staff, and most importantly, our students. And before I finish um, some of these very brief remarks, I'd like all the alumni to please raise your hands. All of the alumni of Cal Poly Pomona. Thank you so much. And it is, uh, we have a number of friends in attendance as well and family members. Now, I met a father uh, two years ago with the float uh, at uh, the judging, and he came from, I don't know if it's Fresno or some northern, uh, northern California, and he said, I had to come see why my son couldn't come home for Thanksgiving dinner, because I just <laughs> didn't believe that he couldn't come home. And when he came to the float, and was also able to participate in putting some flowers on, he got it. He understood why this is something that is important for students of the current class, but also how it deepens the commitment year after year. And the alumni that are here, they, you, have been unwavering. I don't know of any single program at Cal Poly Pomona that has such depth of commitment and engagement as the Rose Float alumni. And that is why we were collectively able to have this lab. And uh, as some of you have heard, there's one more thing, and I think Michelle Gentro is with me on this. There's one more thing we've got to do, and that is we're going to add a kitchen. 
uh, we were able at Thanksgiving to have um, uh, food and other uh, refreshments for uh, the students working diligently uh, on the float, but we want to make sure that uh, we have the proper facility to just build it into the overall uh, occasion for, for our students. Um, I also want to recognize uh, there are a number of, of Cal Poly Pomona administrators here and, and staff. If you're a Cal Poly Pomona administrator staff, will you please raise your hand? I know talk about Krista Spangler and Dan and some other. There are uh, two people in particular that I want to highlight. One is uh, Vice President Dan my pleasure, who is our Vice President for University Advancement. Dan, will you raise your hand? And one of our new uh, uh, members of the cabinet, uh, Christina Gonzalez, who is our Vice President for Student Affairs. Um, Christina has been here now, I think about 14 months or so, but I only met her four months ago, uh, in the sense that uh, because of the pandemic, we hired over Zoom, and uh, now she has come in and really taken hold and is very much a part of the uh, Rose Float uh, program. I also want to um, just uh, recognize the our uh, directors. Where is Carrie? Where is Carrie and Josh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to um, two individuals, and we also have a uh, past. Uh, Cal Poly Pomona director who's come with her daughters, Janetta, who I thought I saw Janetta, all of you will remember uh, Janetta, she has, has uh, come for this, uh, for this event. Over the last two years, while we worked to continue the instruction associated with our academic programs, as you know, we had to forego a number of other activities and programs in order to protect health and safety. And a few left as big a hole as our annual entry in the Tournament of Roses Parade. I've missed it more than I can say. It's a sentiment that I'm sure is felt by each of you. And students, most significantly to all of you from both campuses, thank you for keeping the legacy alive and for representing our universities so well. As polytechnic institutions, nothing so perfectly describes our goals and ambitions, as well as the simple phrase, learn by doing. And nothing we do so perfectly epitomizes learn by doing than our combined annual effort to create the only student design and student-built entry in the Tournament of Roses Parade. What is more, you're not just learning and doing in your major. In the Rose Flow program, future engineers learn botany, future botanists learn design, and future designers learn engineering, and on and on. These skills will serve you the rest of your life, just as any of the alumni here tonight. Whether it's welding or working as part of a team, you're creating a reservoir of knowledge that you will draw on year after year. Whenever we hold this Move Out celebration, I like to remind everyone just how unique this experience is. According to the most recent national data, there are 2,679 four-year colleges and universities in the United States. But out of those 2,679 colleges and universities, there are only two, only two have students who design and build a float for the Tournament of Roses every year. You are truly doing something that isn't happening anywhere else in the country. 
And each year, the students of San Luis Obispo and Pomona make the absolute most of this unique opportunity. And while this evening is about each of you, I couldn't make remarks without talking about someone who isn't with us tonight. He's already been mentioned. This past August, Cal Poly Pomona lost our Mr. Lowe's float when Ron Simons passed away at the age of 79. Ron was a fixture with the Rose Float program going back to the early 60s as a student, followed by 43 years as a staff member at the university and then long into retirement. He loved this program and gave so much of his life to it. I remember when I first met Ron and I said to him, Ron, we're going to build a lab. And he said, I've heard that before. <laughs> I said, well, you've not met me before. <laughs> and sure enough, with Ron, we worked together along with, so deservingly, Don Miller. This new amazing facility bears their name. And to all of us who knew and loved Ron, I offer my deepest condolences. And as we dedicate this move out, I take solace in his memory and to what he meant to this program. We will appropriately recognize both Ron and Don in special ceremonies in the spring. And New Year's Day, millions of people around the world will witness again the creativity and the commitment of the Cal Poly students. Each of you should be tremendously proud of your work and I hope the memories of your time working on a float in San Luis Obispo or Pomona stay with you for the rest of your lives. Thank you again, and I look forward to the judging event on New Year's Eve and our beautiful float rolling down Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena on New Year's Day. Thank you again. Thank you, President Coley. Um, it is time to christen this float. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, don your safety glasses. Let me get out of the way. <laughs> All right, so uh, if any of you are close, let's back up. Back up so you do not get any glass shards. We do have, if you notice, safety gloves, safety glo goggles. Okay, and they're squeezing in. And the countdown, uh, this is a practice, don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to say three, two, and then you go. All right? Three, two, and then you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So as we think about this, I want you all to raise your glass. This is the first time we have had two teams over two years put in the effort to build this float. So think of the coordination, think of the partnership, think of the continued um, dedication that all of these teams represented here by Chris, Regina, Maddie, and Cindy. <laughs> I'm looking going, where's Todd? He's gonna shoot me. Yes. I'm right anyway. behind you. I know, I got it, I got it. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to you guys and your committees because it, it has never been done and we are so proud to be part of you. Raise your glasses. Three, two, one, congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, be careful if you're close to the glass. We would like you to not get cut, okay? And thank you guys. If you just want to back away for a few minutes, we will get that and you can wander around the float. Thank you.